recovering from the general rights and socio-economic development of the country. The Gaza government has taken a set of measures to implement the instructions of Qasem Jomar Tokayev. Thus, the public social fund Kazakhstan Halkana has been created in the country, to which business entities have transferred more than 20 billion in gear. In addition, funds were allocated to strengthen the material and technical base of units of the internal affairs agencies. The regions were provided with 457 petrol cars and 70 buses. Kazakh citizens and legal entities affected during the riots have been given a deferment to repay loans to banks. In addition, the mechanism for compensation for damage caused to domestic entrepreneurs was approved. An operator for the collection of recycling fees has also been identified. It now will be done by Jassel Damu. A hundred percent of shares of this company belong to the state. The government also suspended gas trading until January 1st next year. The UK delegation to the OECE commended the actions of the leadership of Kazakhstan during the January events. Ambassador Neil Bosch welcomed the fact that Kazakh President Kasim Jomar Tokayev drew a clear distinction between peaceful protesters and organized crime in his public speeches. The diplomats stressed that the latter group obviously intended to overthrow the constitutional authorities and this issue requires a thorough investigation. We therefore welcome the president's decision to establish an investigative committee to ascertain what led to these unprecedented events and loss of life. We support the Kazakh authorities' commitment that this will be an effective and transparent investigation and that it will have the confidence of the people of Kazakhstan. The period of stay in quarantine has been significantly reduced in Kazakhstan. If a person has a negative PCR test on the seventh day, self-isolation is terminated ahead of schedule. Kazakh Health Minister Ajar Giniad announced this at a government meeting. According to her, if a person has not passed the second PCR test a week later, then his quarantine ends on the tenth day. Taking into account the speed of transmission and the peculiarities of the course of the Omicron coronavirus variant, the approach to the terms of quarantine and the terms for changing the status in Ashok has been revised. Kazakhstan eased quarantine for businesses. Kazakh Health Minister Ajar Giniad announced at the meeting of the government. She spoke in detail for which business entities the quarantine restrictions were reduced. According to her, the corresponding solution of the Interdepartmental Commission was adopted as part of the execution of the instructions of the head of state, Kasim Jomar Tokayev. The limit on working hours was lifted in all zones for all facilities that let in visitors both with the green and blue health status. Solemn, commemorative and sports events, exhibitions, firms are held without restrictions only with the green status in the Ashok app, regardless of the epidemic zone. The work of sports complexes, recreational and religious facilities, entertainment centers, shopping malls and retail chains is not limited with the same status. In general, the minister noted the country has not eased quarantine measures for business on this scale since the beginning of the pandemic. Restrictions on entry to some facilities were lifted for citizens with the blue health status by 60% in the red zone, by 70% in the yellow zone and completely in the green zone. More than 15 trillion in gear will be allocated for the development of Western Kazakhstan. 1.7 trillion is provided from the state budget, Kazakh Minister of National Economy Alibek Kuantorov said at the government's meeting. A number of projects in Atarau, Aktobia, West Kazakhstan and Mangustau regions will be launched with these funds. Aktobia region expects the implementation of projects on renewable energy sources, gasification of settlements, construction of schools, residential buildings, plans for the production of cement and road construction. An industrial zone will be built in natural region along with the development of several agricultural facilities. A new petrochemical complex is planned to be constructed in Aktau city. The implementation of the comprehensive development plan is designed until 2025 following the creation of 175,000 new jobs.
Халкун Турмус Сапас Найтар Лапта Жахсатушин, Балл Хунгстерде Палеон Кожи. Жатарда Нигзнин, Бюджет Тин, Тускара Жата Тартура, Васам Дух. The main emphasis in the papers is placed on the attraction of extra budgetary funds for the public sector and private investors. The point is you must do everything to make residents of the regions feel positive changes, see the prospect able to work and earn money, evolve their business, receive treatment and study. It is necessary to take every opportunity to make the quality of people's life much better. Director General of the World Health Organization Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus cautions that it was dangerous for countries to assume Omicron is the last variant of COVID-19 and that the pandemic is approaching its endgame. A more deadly variant is likely to emerge, the WHO had said. He consoled, however, that this year the world can get out of the acute phase of the pandemic, subject to the integrated use of tests and vaccines. There are different scenarios for how the pandemic could play out and how the acute phase could end. But it's dangerous to assume that Omicron will be the last variant or that we are in the end game. The conditions are ideal for more variants to emerge. To change the course of the pandemic, we must change the conditions that are driving it. Germany saw a significant increase in coronavirus incidents, registering 100,000 daily cases for four days in a row last week. Despite the large number of infected, the authorities do not intend to tighten the measures. Chancellor Olaf Scholz and heads of the federal states held a meeting and decided not to impose new restrictions, but also not to lift the existing ones. Only vaccinated people or those who have had COVID-19 can attend restaurants, museums, cinemas and fitness studios. Over 70% of German citizens have been fully vaccinated to date. Thanks to the current measures, we did not have such high numbers that experts predicted. We do not yet know how the situation with the disease would enable, whether it will get worse due to the Omicron variant or we will be able to overcome this period. We will monitor the situation and take measures in time. In the meantime, we intend to stick to the previous course. In parallel, we will urge citizens to get vaccinated. Heavy snowfall covered a significant part of Turkey. It's snowing in Istanbul for several days. The authorities closed the movement of ships along the Bosphorus Strait due to poor visibility. Intercity bus service was suspended, the work of two airports was disrupted, and dozens of flights were cancelled. According to rescuers, several hundred motorists across the country were trapped in snow. It took emergency response teams up to 12 hours to reach individual sites. Forecasters predict that bad weather in Turkey's largest city will continue until the end of this week. Kazakhstan will spend about 228 million tenge on the Beijing Olympics. However, this amount is still subject to adjustment. Andrei Krukov, Secretary General of the Kazakh National Olympic Committee, announced at the press briefing. Kazakhstan's national team will consist of 34 athletes vying to bring home medals. Most of the licenses have been worn by skiers. They are now training hard and are accommodated in quarantine zones in order to avoid COVID infection. Currently, all athletes are undergoing the final stage of training in quarantine zones. Two of them are in Kazakhstan and the third one is located abroad. Short track and speed skating teams train at the Alau Ice Palace, while athletes in freestyle skiing, Nordic combined, alpine skiing and ski jumping live and train in Almaty. At the moment, the base for freestyle mogul skiers is Shambulak. Meanwhile, Beijing continues preparations for the Winter Olympics. A full-dress rehearsal of the opening ceremony of the Games with the participation of almost 4,000 people was held in the Chinese capital. An exciting one-and-a-half-hour show awaits the audience. It was directed by the famous Zhang Yimou, whose talent has already won the hearts of many at the 2008 Olympics. We did not involve professional troops or other actors for the ceremony. There has never been such a lineup at the previous Olympics. I think that each participant will remember the preparation for this opening ceremony for the rest of their lives.
The opening ceremony itself is scheduled for February 4th, but two days before the event, another equally spectacular show, the Olympic Torch Relay, awaits the audience. 1,200 torch bearers will take part in it. The organizers will also use self-driving cars and even amphibious robots to deliver the Olympic flame underwater in the Beijing Winter Olympic Park near the Yongding River.